episode of Jaylon's Garage. Very special vehicle today. This is the 100th vehicle restored uh, by Singer. You know, they're one of the leaders in Porsche restorations. And they become, well, quite a force in the industry. I used to read about them in all the European magazines, and I thought, well, they must be near Austria somewhere, or somewhere up in the mountains, you know. And then I would go out in the hills here, and I'd see all these cars go by, and I go, it looks like one of those Singer cars. And then I find out they're, uh, like two miles from the, sh they're right around the corner, where well, the buildings are on the corner here, but they, they, they've, the name has become uh, so synonymous with European handling and I, I don't know, I always call it German engineering. I just assumed they weren't even in this country, let alone literally on the same block. So it's, uh, it's kind of fun. I was fortunate enough to be asked to do the forward for their book, which is a fabulous book. Well, it's just an amazing company. You know, they started doing one or two uh, Porsche restorations and then as the reputation grew, they were invited to Pebble Beach and at the Quail, and then pretty soon they became world famous. And it's just, it's just fun to see that uh, you can do 100 cars. You know, a lot of places do two or three cars and then they go out of business or the customers fall off. But uh, apparently they do such good work, they, they have a really loyal base. And this is one of those vehicles that sells merely by word of mouth. I don't see ads in magazines. You'll see videos and you'll see the cars on shows like mine, but uh, this is one of those cars that really, really uh, speaks for itself. Let's bring in Tim Gregorio. Tim, you're the, uh, am I saying the right, Gregorio? Gregorio. Oh, okay. Gregorio, yeah. very good. Nice okay. Thanks for having us, Jay. Yeah, thanks, thanks for doing this. Oh, did did you pleasure. ever think you'd hit 100 cars? Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, no, no, no. You're one of the first guys. Yeah, yeah, I was there at the beginning with Rob. Okay. Uh, we thought this was going to be a passion project for a few people. Right. Uh, it turned out, you know, Word of mouth caught a hand. Uh, you mentioned the quail. Uh, we took our first order after the quail, actually, uh, back in 2009. And then it kind of just snowballed and spiraled into this giant rock we have now. <laughs> and, and let's, for people who are not familiar, you only do, you only restore air-cooled uh, That's portions, correct. We, we right. uh, only work with a 90 to 94, uh, 964 series. Okay. Uh, we do coupes and targets. We take some flavor from the, all the way from 63 to all the way through the, the 993 era. The last okay, so if I showed up with a, 1967 911 I want to restore. That's not something you would do normally. No, we tell you to keep it and restore it to original. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. that's interesting. For a while we were taking a lot of the, the, the tired 964s out there and it turned out to be one of the, the, the more modern platforms with the, with the early look to it. Right. And it allowed us a good kind of starting point. For so what was the ethos, if that's the correct word, behind this? What You chose this particular car. What was the thinking? To improve it, to make it better, faster, I, stronger, you know? Well, I think the main ethos behind it was honoring the 911 as right. a sports car, and especially okay. the air-cooled era of the 911. Right. We wanted to take everything, distill it, and optimize it into what our celebration of a air-cooled 911 would be. Now, do you have people that show up with water-cooled 911s? Please, you must do my car. It's a, it's a truckload of money. I back up the truck. We don't be... Yeah, we do get those, those yeah. phone calls yeah. now and but then. But no interest. No, no, not right now. No, uh, you know, we enjoy the, the formula we have now. And uh, and what is it about the 911 air-cooled that is so fascinating? For, I mean, I get it. I've got yeah. one myself. I'm just trying to explain to people who don't quite get it. Is it the lightweight? Is it the ease of maintenance? Is it the simplicity of the air cooling? All of those? I think it's all of that. And I think there's a lot of duality in the, in the vehicle, meaning I, I think you can take it for groceries and then go carve up Angel's Crest. Right. And, you know, all in the same vehicle and feel like you were having two different experiences. I mean, obviously, when Porsche came out with the water-cooled engine, they saw the limits of the 911, emissions-wise, yeah. design-wise, all that kind of stuff. What's the most amount of horsepower one can get out of an air-cooled 911 without becoming just some crazy <laughs> thunk, 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 yeah, resto mod. Well, you know what I'm saying? So this particular car runs our four-liter engine. It starts off with a base 3.6-liter case, which is the engine that actually came in this particular car. And that's putting out about 390 horsepower and about 315 foot-pounds of torque. For us, that feels like our sweet spot. Uh, and with four liters at this displacement in an air-cooled engine, we feel we're pretty optimized in terms of longevity and driving pleasure, I'll call it. <laughs> and what is this way now? You've got the carbon fiber fenders and, and whatnot. So this car comes in around 2670, oh, okay, roughly. So yeah. Yeah. It's all carbon fiber except for the doors. Uh, yeah. So you have a steel monocoque, steel doors, uh, carbon fiber hood, uh, front wings, roof, rear fenders, 
deck lid and bumpers. Yeah. yeah Mike Fluid, the head of uh, McLaren, had an interesting article that said, you know, the horsepower wars are over. We won. I mean, you have cars literally with 1,000, 1,500 yeah. horsepower. But I don't know if it necessarily increases the driving pleasure. Just you get from A to B quicker. You sure. know, I always say the greatest thing about my 356 twin cam, the 1963 one I have, I enjoy watching the tack sweep it. It, it it goes at a rate that my eye can follow and enjoy and still see the road. Yeah. Monocos, <laughs> okay, now I'm in prison. What what happened? I got arrested. I hit a child. What happened? Yeah. You know, I mean, so to me, you know, 2,600 pounds and 400 horsepower, you can do incredible things with that, can't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. So everything from here forward is carbon fiber? Correct. correct? Okay. Yes, yes. And how is that? Structurally, is it stronger than the steel? Does it flex? I mean, so all of our panels are autoclaved. Uh, they're done to pretty much a motorsports grade uh, right. these days. The carbon itself does not really offer any structural rigidity to the vehicle. We mm -hmm. left the, the the standard monocoque uh, that Porsche designed many years ago in a intact, better to leave well enough alone. <laughs> right. But if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I guess. Right. We do seam weld uh, chassis on uh, upon request. Overall, the 964 was a generally a very strong platform to begin with, especially torsionally. Uh, so we felt that there wasn't really much to go for there. How does it work? Do I bring my car to you? Do, do I tell you what I want? You find me a car and then build to those specifications? Uh, what is the normal process? Well, a normal process is you contact us telling us you'd like to pursue our services. We can help you locate a, a donor vehicle right. or some people like to bring us their own. We had an overseas uh, customer that brought his car to New York and drove it to California. Really? Or we restored it into his singer. Yeah. Wow, that's dedication. Yeah. <laughs> well, he got to uh, really, I think, enjoy it when it in its purest form and turned into, you know, what we do with it after all. I'm trying to think what visually is different. Obviously, the filler in the center of the hood is different. Is there more flair here in the front than there was? There is. I'm the early cars tended to be narrow until you got to eh, the turbo era in the, right. in, the, in the 70s. And we tried to take a little bit of inspiration from from the eras all the way through. So you'll see a little turbo influence, maybe a little uh, right. RS, you know, but it's all really uh, kind of down to what we felt would be proportionally correct. On there. The roof is steel? Uh, carbon fiber. Oh, carbon fiber yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Jonathan, how does that work? So, so it's a, I understand how you can bolt on fenders. How does one do the carbon <laughs> it's fiber? It's actually a bonded on skin. It's an overlay. Uh, obviously the steel roof is cut out and you're left with the internal structure of the A and B pillars and uh, it's a carbon cap essentially that, that bonds on. And what is our weight saving over the standard uh, 911? It's roughly 500 pounds. Give or wow, take it's options. that much, yeah. huh? Okay. Yeah, give or take options. Okay, yeah. Uh, tell me about the brakes. So we're running, uh, this is a 993 twin turbo brake system on this car, steel brakes. We offer a carbon ceramic package as well. Uh, this particular one is not though, uh, but. Is that aftermarket or is that Porsche as No, well? this is Porsche. Okay. Yeah, this is so it's Porsche braking. Uh, your only driver aid in the car happens to be ABS. Right. It's connected to this runs our Olin's TTX suspension, uh, developed by PSI in, up in Northern California. And this sort of pewter type finish. What do you call this? That's milky nickel. Milky yes, nickel. Yes. Sounds like a stripper, doesn't <laughs> well, it? Yeah. Go down and see Stormy Daniels <laughs> opening act, Mickey Nickel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, I like that though. I like that soft Yeah. Glow it, it, it it's gives. a bit of a signature on on a lot yeah. of our restorations. This looks obviously much later. Yes. Well, it was a little bit of inspiration from the early ducktail right. uh, cars. Uh, we wanted to keep it as a movable and retractable wing like the 964 and 993 series had. So it's a bit of an homage to the early cars. Okay. Uh, let's see, before we get to the end, let's open the front and, yeah, and sure. show people what we have in there. Go ahead. Sorry. And obviously, the car, the car have air conditioning as well? Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, everything is beautifully done. <laughs> the center fill fuel tank is actually an FIA rated fuel cell. We do offer in the state of California a carb emissions legal package, which uh, this tank qualifies as not only a FIA legal cell, but a carb legal cell as well. I like the fact you have the same number of threads storing on, on each bolt. That's it's in the details, right? That seems very <laughs> German, yeah. Uh, what do we have here? What are that? Uh, th those are just uh, actually close-out brackets. They, uh, they hold 
uh, the AC condensers, which oh, are behind okay. the headlight buckets, on okay. to the side of the car. <laughs> okay, and obviously you get to your clutch fluid and whatnot. Oh, oh, under here. Yep. I see. This, yeah. this peels back. And then under the little compartment in the front here, you, you, there's the ABS pump and brain, and you have the battery as well. Okay. Do most people open the hood and fill the, the tank? or Depends how brave you are, I drag guess. That hose, yeah, dragging that hose <laughs> over the top <laughs> seems... Well, after the first or second time, it becomes pretty easy. This luminescent paint is very nice. What is this color? Uh, we call it lunar silver. Okay. I mean, is it your own color? It's a, uh inspirational color from another manufacturer. Okay. <laughs> how hard is it to match paint on carbon fiber with paint on... Uh, aluminum or steel is it is that tricky or is no. it just painted it just covers the same surface uh, no all, so we uh, use a process developed by Sickens for us uh, so all of our vehicles are painted using Sickens paint they have helped us over the past few years develop a system that actually does it, it lays flat and properly across both substrates gotcha gotcha cool okay and this just closes yeah just a nice gentle okay is that the standard wiper? That's actually a 993 setup. Okay. So we modify the cowl. Uh, we bring it to 993 specs. The standard 964 had the, the wipers spread apart more. Right. And then in 993, it was one of the trademarks. And we felt that it was a neat carryover. And what year is this car again? This is a 91. It's a 91. So this is pre-airbag, isn't yes, it? Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's move to the back here. Let's... Uh, When I was a kid, one of my pet peeves with Porsche was you'd open the hood of a, a Cobra and there'd be the Webers and the valve yeah. covers that said Cobra. I mean, there was a visual yeah. impact <laughs> looking at it. And when you'd open an early Porsche, just, you just kind of really couldn't see anything. It was yeah, also, yeah. Whereas this is beautifully done. I love this finish here, this sort of satin finish. What is this off of? That's actually off of a water-cooled GT3. Okay. So 997 era GT3. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that, a little uh, mix and match. Yeah. We heavily massage it to kind of make it our own. That's a standard fan or a different it fan? Is, that is a standard fan, actually. Yeah. The throttle bodies are bespoke to us. They are made for, for us by Kinsler Fuel Injection. Oh, sure. Michigan. They're very good. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, I had an old Maserati fuel injected one. Everybody always converts them to Webers, but I was determined to, yeah. to, to make this work. And we sent it to Kinsler, and they did a wonderful job. They did they've, a really good job. They've yeah. been a great, great supplier yeah. of ours. It's Ed Pink uh, built racing engine. They built uh, they built all the engines for us these days in every uh, Singer restoration. So right. We've, we've got a great relationship going with the team over there. And I love the fact that it's a proper road car. It's not just some silly track vehicle. I mean, it's got air conditioning. Yeah. You can actually go someplace in it and drive it. I mean, so many of these cars are so track oriented now that it's it's just uncomfortable yeah. on the road. You know, it's just it's not absolutely just not, not fun. Absolutely. Oh, this is just beautiful. Now, is this one of these deals? Is this going to Saudi Arabia or going to Germany or uh, somewhere? No, this this car is going to stay stateside. It's uh, it's actually going to Alabama. Alabama. Yes, wow. Yes. Yes. Believe it or not. Well, that's so, good to know. Very cool. I know. It's, cool. It's, the more of these restorations we do, it's really fascinating to see where they wind up in the world. Very cool. Oh, it's just just beautifully done. Uh, these bumpers are. Those stock. are. They start as carbon fiber bumperettes that okay. we fit to each bumper, and then they are uh, sent out for nickel plating. You can nickel plate yes. carbon fiber. Our supplier claims they can nickel plate an apple if we gave it to them. Really? Yes. I, We've yet to take them up on that challenge. Yeah. But. Okay. <laughs> so they they cease to function as bumpers at this point. I imagine yes, if you be. bump a carbon yes. fiber bumper, it ceases to be <laughs> yeah, a exactly. bumper. Okay. All Correct. right. But that's okay because no one's going to bump into this. Now, with the four liter, when you take it out to four liter, do you have to increase the oil capacity? No, we run the same oil, the same same oil yeah. capacity. Uh, we did increase the cooler size, though. Okay. Over, over uh, a few generations of moving to the four liter, we definitely found, especially since a lot of these vehicles are going to other climates where it's like much warmer than Southern California, even though that's hard to imagine sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and I, tell me about this. Stock usually there's uh, louvers on 964, right. so we okay. removed the louvers, replaced it with the early style grill, which is what the early cars had, and uh, a lot of people would put mesh behind there. We decided to go. Okay, a gotcha, bit different. gotcha. Okay, I noticed on the carpet it's a single 100. This is the only car that can say that. Correct? Uh, yes. Okay, let's take a look at the interior. Now tell me about this. What color is this interior? Uh, this is uh, it's a blackberry actually. Blackberry. Yeah. Okay. Now, I've never seen blackberry, so I don't really know. Is that a common color you've done before, or is this unique to this car? This is pretty unique to this car. We have done other cars that are similar. This is quite unique to this one. Well, all singers are similar, but none are the same. Right, and, yes, okay, exactly. Okay. 
Yeah, this particular car has uh, you know, our eight-way uh, touring seat option in it. Oh, okay. Um, it's a, uh, we call it a, a, a suede mix leather weave, actually. So you, you have a standard leather mixed with a suede wo uh, woven together. Right. And across, you kept the standard dashboard or gauges, which... So it takes three sets of gauges to actually make our gauge package, our standard gauge package, which you see here. It does follow the same layout as the, the as the factory. Did. Well, that's what I like because it it looks like Porsche. Yeah. So many cars come here that have been modified that I'm in it. I what car am I in again? I, because there's nothing on it that, that I'm identifying with. You well, know. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We wanted to just distill and enhance what. Porsche did so well. Right, but you did change the wheel. That's a, which yeah. wheel is that? <laughs> that's, that's a Momo prototype. Okay, very nice uh, wheel. Wrapped to our specifications in our in our uh, own leather. Now I'll check you on your Porsche history. Oh, Why is the key on that side? Uh, for Le Mans starts. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because if you could turn the key and put your hand exactly. on the gear shift at the same time. Very well. good. That's very good. Tell me about this trick mirror. I like this. I just assumed this was one of these. I got to roll down the window and then <laughs> press the glass with my thumb. That's uh, designed in, uh, in house at Singer. Oh, very yeah. nice. Boy, that's that's really quite clever. So you drill a hole in the glass and you have a rubber gasket on yeah. each side. And yeah. Then, oh. Yeah, we actually have the glass made for us, so it comes to us with a hole in it already. Right. But that's another composite piece that starts out as a plastic substrate and is uh, uh, nickel plated. Oh, that's really cool. If someone came to you and said, oh, I saw that 100 car, I want exactly the same car, would you not do it or would you have to call the owner and ask permission? How does that work? We would that's try to offer. Yeah. <laughs> we try to persuade them to go another way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We tried to offer alternatives. Well, I mean, that's what makes this really unique. I mean, it's the 100th one, which is very cool. And it's a proper road car. This is what I love about it. You could drive this yes. across country. I, I do not recognize the uh, the center console. Is that unique to you? Yeah, it's 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 fabricated for us okay. and trimmed in. So that is not team. Porsche either. No. Okay, but it's nice the way it's the handbrake is it's cut in there. Yeah. Yeah. A little place to keep your change as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gee, it's just just beautiful. Can we take it for a ride? Of course. Let's give it a shot. Well, wow, it smells fantastic in here. Fresh leather. Legal reason you keep steel doors? 
We do offer carbon doors. There's a side impact beam in the door. Oh, okay. I think it's more of a safety thing. Yeah. So 91 had this, the door impact beam. Yeah. 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 How many Porsches did they still build between 90 and 94? I've heard worldwide numbers between 30 and 40,000. I don't know the exact number, but uh, not much chance you run out. I think we're, we're we're just dipping our toe into the pool. Although the Porsche market seems to have cooled a bit, so you can pick up some. Yeah, I think there's a bit. The 964, uh, to, it seems to have. Uh, I don't know if plateaued is the right word. Maybe stabilized <laughs> yeah. a bit. You know, I think the the entire air cool market spiked like crazy. So how many cars you got in the hopper waiting to go? Oh, well, there's 130 after this. You have 130 ready to go. Uh, well, orders coming up. Yeah. Wow. I mean, they made deposits. Yeah, wow. yeah. Car, you know, <coughs> various wow. stages, I guess. You know, we're up to about 230 on the books right now. Wow, that's amazing. So, yeah. So, what's the next milestone? 150 or 200? Uh, 150 will be a big milestone, I think. Yeah. You know. So the first car was. 2008, is that about right? Yeah, we started in 2008, debuted at the first, uh, that was the at the Quail uh, in 2009, so yeah. that summer, about a year and a half later. <laughs> well, I love the gearbox, the shifting is just sublime, it really is, it's so much fun just to go through it because there's no point to ever hang up or you have to give it yeah. an extra push. It adds to the, the visceral sensation, I think, of driving the car, yeah. becoming one with the uh, fact that there's a trailing arm two feet from your butt back there yeah you know you really you begin to feel the connection to the to the road or the you know, steering wheel I and, switch cars so often that it takes a while to get into the Porsche mindset yes you know yeah. I mean it's just a different and then okay I got it now you know I find them to be a very easy car to get comfortable with though yeah yeah this feels extremely rigid how much more bracing do you do in the chassis much not much, no. Uh, there's a strut brace in the front, yeah. um, and there's some there's a moderate amount of seam welding done, but that's to kind of the customer specification. The, the 964 Platinum platform was inherently stiff, much stiffer than the than the previous generation 3.2 Carreras. So it was one of the reasons we decided to go with the 964 platform. Now, when a ca carbon fiber fender gets hit, do you, do you just replace the whole fender, or can it be? carbon fiber be repaired like fiberglass? It can be repaired. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah. It depends on the severity, obviously, yeah. of the head. Um, in most cases, I would say it's probably more uh, cost-effective just replace them. And what does a carbon fiber fender weigh? I think the carbon fiber fender is around <coughs> 10 pounds. Right. At the most. That's uh, nothing. Yeah. And the steel fender is what, about 35? Yeah, around 35. Yeah. It's amazing. Porsche has never cramped. You could be you know what, 6'3"? Yeah, 6'3". Yeah. This thing, no problem. For, uh, for what appears at first to be a small cockpit, it's actually right. quite spacious. Yeah. What are your maintenance requirements for uh, these motors? Is it the same as any Porsche motor? Yeah, more oh. or less. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we, we recommend 3,500 uh, miles on the oil change. Right. Uh, Unless under you know track conditions or something, we'll, we'll tell you to change right. the oil a little bit uh, after each track day. Uh, valve adjustments at about uh, ten thousand miles. Well, I just love this gearbox. It's really fantastic. Tell me about this steering rack. Uh, we run a nine nine three steering rack. Okay. Uh, so the nine six four has a great steering rack. The nine nine three we felt was better. Takes right. away a little bit of the numbness on center. That's still air cooled, or is that? Yeah, water? it was the last of the air cooled. Right. Series. Okay. So okay. Uh, that went to about what 98, 99. Uh, 98. Yes. Yeah. You know the the interesting thing about the air cooled series 911, the, the, the generations of it, is that you know all the way from 64 to 98, there's a lot of parts that are interchangeable. Right. Without much, too much fuss, you can you can slam a, a, a 36 out of a 993 into a 66 911 without you know, reinventing the wheel. Well, Tim, thank you. Now, the owner of this uh, car is waiting at the garage for us, so obviously we have to beat on it too hard, but yeah. you certainly could. It feels bulletproof. It's wonderful to drive. It, it really is the, the sort of the best expression of the whole air cool Porsche thing. It's, if, it's almost as if, if, if they were still making this car, this is what it would be, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Close to 400 horsepower, 2,600 pounds. 
just the best shifting transmission boy I've driven in a long time. And of course, just the leather and the smell and the custom wheel and the whole deal. I mean, the, the level of detail is, is really, really amazing. Tim, thank you very much. And congratulations oh, on thanks, your uh, 100th vehicle. That's really, really exciting. It's really a testament because there are, there are a few businesses harder than the car business, you know? <laughs> yes. And, and it's so much fun to see huge manufacturers at the moment. And you have McLaren, you have Tesla. Then on the smaller scale, you got you guys and a few other people. And you're a going business. You're in the car business now. And yeah. you're a manufacturer. And I think that's really, really exciting to see. So congratulations to Singer. And uh, happy anniversary. And I think the new owner is going to love this car. Thanks, well, Jay. As long as I don't crack it up before we get home. <laughs> i got to keep driving this thing. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>